Before there was anything, before time or space or any of the creation we know, there was source. And really to talk about source at all is futile because it is totally incomprehensible to us. The Tao Te Ching says the Tao that can be spoken of is not the absolute Tao. The names that can be given are not the absolute names. And so we talk about divine source, the original source, but we need to understand that in reality, it is totally beyond us. We know it's there though. We know it's there because of the results, the manifested universe, which is organized and intelligent universe that had to come from an organized, intelligent source. And then at some point, and we can speculate why, we can never know, source manifested this universe. In Genesis, it said, God said, let there be light. Now I have my doubts that source actually spoke those words. But, the, the universe manifested with light, or in effect, with energy. The most widely accepted uh, theory of the origin of the universe by a physicist, by cosmo cosmologist, not cosmetologists, <laughs> but uh, cosmologists, and they may believe it too, you'll have to tell us later, uh, is that the universe started with this explosion of one energy. One energy, one type of energy only, exploded out to create the universe. And within that energy, this is what's amazing, everything that's here was within that original one energy. There was no, there's no other place where anything comes from. It all came from that original energy. Now, I'm going to add to this Big Bang Theory because what I'm going to say is that one energy also included spiritual energy. And so when the universe expanded, it breaks off into the four known physical energies uh, gravity, electromagnetic energy, the weak force, the strong force, they create matter, but also spiritual energy. Now this is a different kind of perception because generally when we talk about spiritual energy, the concept is it is not within this universe, but it's beyond it. It's outside of this universe. For source, yes, but the fact is, the very definition of being outside of this universe is that we can have no contact with it. If there are multiple universes, the definition is anything that we can in any way have contact with is within our universe. If it's outside of that, we have no way of connecting with it. And yet we know that we connect with spiritual energy. And I say it was part of the original manifestation of this world. And what, what does that mean? What's the difference? And, and to me, what it means is that the spiritual energy is a part of existence. As other energies, it's a part of and affects other energies, affects matter. It also means that it's a field because all energies are actually energy fields. And it means that spiritual energy is a wave because all energies are waves, which means that it vibrates. So this is what we have, that spiritual energy is manifested within our universe. It's a, a comprehensive field that vibrates. Now, before I go any further, I want to talk about a, a riddle, a brain game. 
Einstein used to, to work with what he thought called thought experiments. And many of you may have heard this before. I'm going to tell you a little experiment. Let's say that Sandy has this amazing power. She can take a step of any size. She could step a mile or she could step a millionth of an inch. She has that ability. Now, we place her 20 feet back from this wall. And I set up one rule. Every step she takes will take her halfway to the wall. So she's 20 feet away. Her first step is 10 feet, right? Halfway. Her next step is 5 feet, halfway. Who knows, I know many of you know, how many steps will it take her to get to the wall? Who knows Infinite. that? Infinite. Okay. Stephen tells. Infinite. Infinite. She will never get to that wall. Sorry, Sandy, I know you wanted to. I wanted the wall. Because remember, it doesn't matter how close she is. If she's a millionth of an inch away, her next step is half of that, so she only gets half a step. But quantum theory might tell us a different story. Remember, quantum theory is the theory of very small things. In effect, one of the most successful theories in existence, every test of it, every done, has proven even its most outlandish ideas follow through. Now, not everything in it is proven. But everything that has been tested has been shown to be right. One of its earliest uh, proponents, discoverers, is a physicist named Max Planck. And although he did many things, what he's mostly known for is the Planck constant, which is 6.626074 times 10 to the minus 34th m squared kg divided by s squared. I know, you're saying, why didn't anybody ever tell me this before? <laughs> this explains everything. Well, what it explains, what the Planck constant is about, is it says things can only get so small and no small. What's it mean? We think of the universe as continuous. It flows. If you draw a line, that line goes all the way. But what the quantum theory and the Planck constant says is that's not true. If you get small enough, a billion, billion, billionth of an inch, whatever, you can't get any smaller than that. And so when Sandy gets to the, that close to the wall, <laughs> She can't take half the distance because half the distance no longer exists. So she would get to that wall. But it tells us something else. Relativity theory shows us that space and time are not separate. There's space-time. So if space is broken up into units, time is broken up into units. Time exists not as a continuous flow, but as a minute beating of in and out. And if you're interested in the science of it, I could give you some references. If you're interested in the spiritual aspect, read some of Deepak Chopra's work, because he talks about this. But if that is true, then time beats in and out, and it has a rhythm because it's a steady beat. How many of you are musicians? <laughs> you know, a musician somebody who produces music. I mean, I'm a musician. I play a really mean radio. And if you want to go old school, I'm great with a record player. Uh, but musicians know, as uh, physicists, you have all kinds of sounds, but if you have sounds that have a steady beat or a steady wave, they're called harmonics. 
It's that steady beat. So if you have a wave of 50 megahertz, that's a harmonic wave. And it will resonate with other waves of 50 megahertz. But it will also resonate with other waves of multiple, so of 100 megahertz, or 150, or 200. And when these reg, uh, waves, or sounds, resonate together, they become stronger and bigger. Now, Angie and Stella and I have been studying recently ancient wisdom we decided, let's look at the ancient teachings and see what keys we find in all of them and how they relate to what we know from physics. And Stella tries to keep us kind of grounded on this. Uh, <laughs> she's not always there. Sometimes Angie and I get together separately. Probably some of the theories we come up aren't necessarily the best. Uh, the other day, we were talking and realizing that the, you know, what it really comes down to is all spiritual energy, so the physical part doesn't really matter, and so we were all ready to start the church of nothing really matters. <laughs> <laughs> and Stella had the checkbook, so we couldn't incorporate it. <laughs> so let's look at this. We're talking about cosmology, energies, the space-time continuum, the Planck constant, um, ancient wisdom. Where does that all come in together? Well, one of the things, and I'm speaking for myself in this interpretation and in studying these, is I don't see the ancient wisdom saying that we control spiritual energy. Now, I know that's a key for new thought, for religious science, that our thoughts can actually control our universe. I don't see it. I do see, I mean, I, I don't see that, I don't see it in Buddhism. I don't see it in Taoism. The ancient Hindu teachings were teaching that the physical reality is an illusion and not significant, uh, not in Islam. Now, in Christianity, there is a quote that may or may not be correct from Jesus that says, when you pray for something, believe that it's already yours and it will be yours. But I have to tell you, there's a lot of other <laughs> quotes that say, God already knows what you want. You don't need to pray for it. God takes care of the birds, takes care of the flowers. They're not out there praying for things. So if the ancient wisdoms don't say that, and by the way, we are still studying this, so it's not a, a completed program yet. One of the things I know they say, whether they talk about God or the, the Buddhahood or the Tao, or the divine spirit, they say you can harmonize with it. They say that we can take our energy and have that resonate with the energy of the universe. Angie and I were talking about this and saying this is metaphysical harmonics, or Angie prefers the term metaphysical harmonism harmonizing with this energy above the physical energy. And I think, truthfully, that is the key that we can be looking for. And how do we do that? And I think it comes down to what Angie was talking about. I'm going to say it in a, a little different way. The three R's. If we redefine, revisualize, 